Is the universe a hologram? Probably not, but it doesn't mean we can't learn anything from the idea. On the first day of 1998, Juan Maldacena published a landmark paper conjecturing that a certain kind of quantum field theory is dual to a certain kind of quantum gravity. Maybe it doesn't sound like it, but this was a huge deal. See, our best theory of gravity, which is general relativity as provided by Einstein, doesn't play particularly well with quantum mechanics. But general relativity and quantum mechanics seem to both make spectacularly accurate predictions. Consequently, finding a way to marry these two theories is perhaps the most important problem in fundamental physics, and it has been for 70 years. String theory was one proposed solution to this problem, but as a theory of physics, it's notoriously difficult to handle. On the other hand, quantum field theory, while quite complicated, is well understood. Naively, these two theories are completely different, but Maldacena showed that that's not quite right. Maldacena started with a particular system in type 2b string theory, a stack of four-dimensional brains. The details of this don't really matter much for this video. Such a system is enormously complicated, but if you only consider the low energy physics, it simplifies significantly. So that's what he did. Then he took two more limits, one limit where the number of brains times the strength of the string coupling is very big, and one limit where the same is very small. What he observed is that when this product is large, the low energy theory describes a purely gravitational string theory in a particular type of spacetime called anti de Sitter space, and it has a compactified five dimensional sphere attached. On the other hand, when the product is small, the low energy theory describes a quantum field theory closely related to the theory of the strong nuclear force, which is called N equals 4 supersymmetric Yang-Mills theory living in four dimensions. But because the Yang-Mills theory is perfectly well defined for any value of this product, Maltesana conjectured that the two descriptions must in fact be identical. And it's this anti de Sitter space that's the ADS in the famous ADS-CFT correspondence, and the Yang-Mills theory is a type of conformal field theory which is the CFT. And the upshot of all of this is that, if the duality is true, we can use our understanding of the CFT to understand the quantum gravity string theory, even in the non-perturbative regime, and that's where traditional methods fail. And in fact, it's precisely this regime where strong quantum gravity effects are expected to play a role, and where we least understand gravity. So it's a big deal. By the way, we can also use it to study strongly coupled quantum field theories using the weakly coupled gravitational theory, which is also fairly well understood. Now this correspondence is called holographic because, in some sense, the quantum field theory can be described as living on the boundary of the spacetime of the gravitating theory. In this context, a holographic relationship is that the surface of a system contains the same information as the volume of the system. Some people take this idea quite literally, suggesting that gravity isn't real and it's just a manifestation of a non-gravitating quantum field theory, and that our four spacetime dimensions are illusory, and that we really exist in three dimensions of spacetime. However, the universe we live in does not look at all like anti de Sitter space, nor is our universe five-dimensional. So at the very least, this correspondence does not directly inform our physical reality. But it does provide an ample playground to explore string theory, and perhaps the lessons we learn from this toy model can be used to better understand the world around us.